Welcome back to PSD Tuts. In this lesson, we're going to explore how to revolve a path or layer, and that will complete our overview of creating 3D objects from scratch. So let's begin by making a new layer, and we'll draw a simple wine bottle. So we'll call this layer Bottle. And it's always worth giving your layers a name, because then when you make a 3D object, it will have that same name, and when you combine the objects later, you'll find it much easier to figure out what's what. We'll use the Pen tool to draw a new path. So let's start at the top of the bottle, go down the side of the neck, trace it down, and now we can draw the outside of the bottle, a little curve at the bottom, and let's go back to a point that lines up where we started. Now, we might think that's enough. So let's go to our 3D panel, change the source to work path. We want to make a 3D extrusion, so we'll hit Create. And we get this warning dialog saying that it can't make an extrusion from this path because it's not a closed path. So we'll say OK to it, and let's click on one end of the path, and then back to the beginning. We'll move the bottom handle so that the two line up, and we get a nice straight line. And this time, we can hit Create and create our bottle. Now, we don't really know what shape we want this to be, but we can adjust it afterwards. So let's make our bottle. And as you'd expect, it extrudes this shape into a standard extrusion object. If we select it, we can go to the Properties panel, and now in the Deform section, we can say we want to bend it. And we've tried bending it before by dragging on the little Bend head-up display here, and we can see how we can create these interesting shapes out of it. If we use the numerical entry instead, we can create exactly the shapes we want. So let's ro rotate this at a horizontal angle of 360 degrees to make a complete circle, and set the vertical axis to zero. And there is our basic bottle shape. But looking at this, you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, that wasn't the shape that I drew. That's a much thinner version. There's a good reason for that. And if we go to the top of the properties panel, we can see this little indicator here, which sets the deformation axis. At the moment, the white square in the middle indicates that it's revolved it around the center of the path. We want to revolve it around the right-hand side of the path. So we click the little button on the right of the path here, and there is our bottle now duly revolved around the right-hand side. It seems rather fatter than we'd expect. And when we look at the top-down view, you can see there's a hole right in the middle. And that is all due to the extrusion depth. If we drag to make the extrusion depth bigger, our object gets fatter. And we can make it smaller, and in fact we can give it a negative value, and that inverts the shape of our object. We want it to have no extrusion depth at all, so we'll set it to zero. And now that correctly mirrors our original path. It's revolved it around the right-hand edge to create this 3D object. Now when you look at this, the first thing you think is, all right, that's all very well, but it's not really the shape of a bottle. And that's because when we drew the initial path, we didn't really have a reference to set it to, to get that shape. But we can fix that. If we go back onto the Mesh tab, we can now press the Edit Source button. And there it is, opening in the new window. Let's make this window narrower and move it over to the side. And you can see how this does, in fact, accurately represent the shape of the bottle. Well, what we can do is let's grab these two points on the side and move them in to make it narrower. And we can just save this document as we would normally, and it saves it back into our file. That's a bit tall, so let's grab these top points and move them down 
Now I'm holding the Shift key so I get a purely vertical movement. Save again. And there it is. That's a little bit tall. Save again. Maybe we can select just this point and bring the neck of the bottle up. Save again. And that's a much more pleasing shape for a bottle. So now we can close this window. So that's very straightforward. We've made a solid object and now we can view this from any angle and it's a real 3D object made out of that shape. Let's hide this for a moment and we'll make a new layer and let's make a glass. So we'll call the new layer glass. Once again we can use the pen tool to draw the shape of our glass. So let's start at the top bring this out and we're making a nice wine glass shape down the stem and to the base and we can put a little kick at the stem if we want. We want a corner point just at the bottom here so I'll hold the Alt key on a PC, Mac, Option key on a Mac and click on that to make a corner point and now I'll hold the Shift key to draw a straight line so we have a nice flat base on our glass over to here. As we draw this, we have to draw the inside of the glass as well. And we can make the glass as thin or as thick as we like by drawing the interior of the shape and let's put a little rounded top on it. Once again, we can make a new 3G object from our work path, so let's hit Create. And there's the glass. We know exactly what we have to do. We'll go to the Properties tab We'll select our object. We'll go onto the Deform tab, set the deformation axis onto the right and the extrusion depth to zero, and the horizontal angle bending to 360 degrees. And there's the glass. And that's looking quite good. Once again, if we're not sure about this glass, well, we can go through and we can go back to our mesh and we can edit the shape of it. And I find it's always best to get some kind of rough idea from the path into a 3D object first. And then you can always edit the shape afterwards to make it exactly the shape that you want. It's very hard when looking at just the path to imagine exactly how it's going to work as a 3D object. But we don't need to do that because we can shape it as we go along. And there it is. And when we take this object and we look down on the top of it, you can see, yep, that really is our hollow glass. And we've made that in just a couple of minutes directly in Photoshop. Now, so far we've made two objects. We've made them both from paths. But you don't need to use a path, you can make it from a selection as well. Let's try doing that. We'll hide our glass and let's make a new layer. We'll make a table for these things to stand on. New layer and table. So let's switch to the brush tool and let's start to draw the table. We can do this very simply. We'll press the brush, hold the shift key to draw a straight line and now as we drag we get a straight line going across the surface. Let's add another line on top of this. So dab with the brush, hold the shift key to draw it across and maybe an extra small reveal on top. And that will give us a little bit of shape to the edge of our table. This time we're not working from a path so we can't use work path as our source. We'll change that to the selected layer and hit Create. And there it is. Once again we know what to do. We go to the Properties tab, we'll select it, go on to the Deform section, Deform on the right hand edge, set the Extrusion to 0 and the Bend Angle to 360 degrees. And there is our table, easily made in just a minute or so. If we wanted to make this an outdoor table with a hole in it for an umbrella, well, we could do that as well. All we'd have to do would be to increase the extrusion depth 
and there's our hole in the middle of our table. But let's leave that as it was. So, we have three objects that we've built so far. We've got the table, the glass, and the bottle. Let's now see what happens when we put them all together. We can select them by holding the Shift key down and selecting the next object, and the Shift key to select the next object. And there are all three selected. And when we choose Merge 3D Layers, it puts them all together in a single scene. Now you can see it's done this in a rather strange way. The scales are all over the place, but more importantly, it's merged everything into one. And we can fix that quite simply by selecting each object in the scene. And you can see as we click on it, we're able to select each object independently. Let's start with the table. Forget the fact that the, the whole layer is named bottle, because when you merge layers together, Photoshop always gives the result the name of the bottommost layer. If we go onto the Properties panel, we can now look at the Mesh tab, and we can set the coordinates. So let's set the rotation angles to 0. So now we know our table is sitting flat on the ground. Let's take the, the glass next. And once again, let's change these angles to 0. So that's sitting flat. And let's move it up and let's bring that across a bit. It seems rather too big for our scene, so we can shrink it and bring it down again so it sits quite happily on that table. And with the bottle, we'll select it. On the coordinates we can see it's already sitting on the ground plane. But let's pick that up and move it across. Now we want to move the whole scene across. And when we move the scene, it's important to make sure we don't have any of the objects selected. So in the 3D mode panel at the top here, we can choose this icon, and that allows us to pan the scene. And we can get that as we want it. Let's just have it so we can see the edge of the table there. That's quite good. The glass clearly is much too big for the bottle, so let's select that and make that smaller. And we'll bring it down so it's just sitting on the table like this. And by dragging on the faces, we're able to slide it forwards and let's move it over to the right here so that it's sitting just in front of that bottle. Now, because we're working in three dimensions, it can be quite hard to see what we're doing, and that's where this secondary view comes in. This is a top-down view we're looking at at the moment, and you can see that the glass is actually intersecting the bottle. And that's no good, so let's bring that forwards so it's clear of it, and you can see here it's now quite clear of that bottle. Slightly smaller, bring it down again, and that looks good. And if we want, we can now select the whole scene and pan the whole thing over, and that's quite a good viewing angle. We could even zoom in on it a little, so we bring it closer to the camera. And there are all our objects. Because they're all in the same scene, they're effectively one single object. When we click on the Lighting tab at the top here, we can now move the light around. And you can see there the objects are casting their shadow on the table. When we bring the light onto this side, not only is the bottle casting its shadow onto the table, but the glass is also casting its shadow onto the bottle. So we can treat these very much as if they're a single object. We can work with the entire scene in one go. And of course, even though we are looking at this as if it were a single object, they're all quite separate, and they can all be selected and manipulated individually. So if we wanted to make this table smaller and slide it across so we can see some of that nice edge we've got, well, we can continue to do that. 
we're not limited by the fact that it's all effectively a single scene. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to take this scene and apply lighting, texture and transparency to it to turn it into a fully lit, fully rendered scene such as this one.